What's going on everyone and welcome to my second YouTube channel. My name is Soman and today's video is going to be about a brief history of different football formations. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because in the coming days and weeks, I'll be talking about each of these formations in detail. I will try to highlight the strengths and weaknesses of these formations and how to properly use them. So first we need to understand what are the different formations and how football has evolved over the years. So it all started in 1872 when England and Scotland played the first international football game. Back in the days, teams only had one thing in their mind and that was to attack, attack and attack. This game was no different and it was more of a war than a football game. All of the 22 players were given only one job and the job was to carry the ball and try to dribble past the entire opposition team and plant the ball behind the enemy lines. And if someone gets in the way, take them out. Football at that time was a complete chaos and it had no shape at all. So this is how England lined up for this game. A 1-1-8 formation with one defender picking up the loose balls, one midfielder and eight attacking players. The English style of play at that time was all about individual excellence and they were renowned for their dribbling. Players would try to take the ball forward as far as possible and only when they could not proceed any further they would kick the ball forward for someone else to chase. Scotland, on the other hand, went with a more cautious 2-2-6 formation, which did not go well with the Scottish fans, as they considered it to be a very negative response from their team, compared to the eight attacking players of England. But Scotland did surprise England, as unlike the English players, Scotland tried to focus more on the passing than running with the ball. The first long-term successful formation was recorded in 1880. The 2-3-5 formation was originally known as the Pyramid. This was the standard formation in England in the 1880s. And by 1890, it was used by many other countries as well. Most of the top-level teams kept using this formation until the 1940s. For the first time, a balance between attacking and defending was found. When defending, the two defenders would watch out for the opponents outside and inside forwards while the midfielders would watch for the other three forwards. It was this 2-3-5 formation that gave rise to the convention of shirt numbers. Vittorio Pozzo, the coach of the Italian national team, came up with this formation in the 1930s. Since most of the teams at that time were using the 2-3-5 formation, so Vittorio decided to pull two of his attackers in the midfield to gain the numbers advantage in the midfield. By dropping two attacking players in the midfield, Vittorio now had five players in the midfield which gave his team the chance to control the middle of the ground. This small change created a stronger defense than the previous systems as well as allowing effective counterattacks. Vittorio Pozzo won back-to-back -back World Cups for Italy in 1934 and 1938 using this formation. The Hungarian manager Martin Bukovi also used the same formation very successfully in the 1940s and 1950s. This formation is also known as the WW formation. Pep Guardiola's Barcelona and even Man City to some extent use a variation of the same 2-3-2-3 formation. Before we talk about the next formations, it is important to understand the changes in the offside rule over the years and how these changes led to changes in formations. The offside rule was introduced in 1863. A player was considered offside unless three players of the opposing team are in front of him, including the goalkeeper. So in this diagram, the player with the ball is considered offside because only two players are in front of it, the centre-back and the goalkeeper. In 1925, a new offside rule was introduced. A player was now considered offside unless two players of the opposing team are in front of him, including the goalkeeper. So in this diagram, the player with the ball is now not considered offside because two players are in front of him. In simple words, the number of players needed in front of the attacking player was now reduced from 3 to 2. The offside rule was again changed in 1990. A player is onside if he is level with the second to last player of the opposing team, including the goalkeeper. So in this diagram, the player with the ball is not considered offside because he is level with the second to last player. The WM system was created in the mid-1920s by Herbert Chapman of Arsenal to counter a change in the offside law in 1925. The change had reduced the number of opposition players that attackers needed between themselves and the goal line from 3 to 2. This led to the introduction of a centre-back to stop the opposing centre-forward and tried to balance defensive and offensive playing. The formation became so successful that by the late 1930s, most of the English clubs had started using the WM formation 
The WM formation is also described as a 3-2-5 or as a 3-4-3 or more precisely a 3-2-2-3 formation. Football was developing at a very rapid speed and by 1950, more and more teams had started to realize that attacking was not the only way of winning games and defending was also equally important. The 4-2-4 formation attempts to combine a strong attack with a strong defense. The credit for creating the 4-2-4 lies with two different people, Flavio Costa, the Brazilian national coach in the early 1950s, as well as the Hungarian Bela Gutmann. Brazil was the first team who perfectly implemented this system in the 1958 World Cup. They kept both their wingers up and wide, who were given the job of getting to the opposition byline and crossing the ball in the box for the two strikers. Brazil successfully used this formation for many years and they won the World Cup of 1958 and 1970 using this very same formation. 4-4-2 was the most common formation in football in the 1990s and the early 2000s. The midfielders in this formation are required to work very hard to support both the defense and the attack. Typically, one of the central midfielders is expected to go up as often as possible to support the forward pair, while the other will play a holding role, shielding the defense. The two wide midfielders must move up the flanks to the goal line in attacks and yet also protect the fullbacks. On the European level, the major example of a team using a 4-4-2 formation was AC Milan, trained by Arrigo Sacchi and later Fabio Capello. This team won three European Cups, two international Cups and three UEFA Super Cups between 1988 and 1995. After seeing the success of AC Milan, many other teams also started using the same 4-4-2 formation in the 1990s. One variation of a 4-4-2 formation is the 4-4-1-1 formation, in which one striker plays slightly behind his partner as a sporting striker. The second striker is generally a more creative player, the playmaker, who can drop into midfield to pick up the ball before running with it or passing to teammates. Diego Simeone has successfully used this formation at Atletico Madrid for many years. Antoine Griezmann often played the role of a second striker for Atletico Madrid, with Diego Costa taking the position of the first striker. The 4-3-3 formation was a development of the 4-2-4 formation and was played by the Brazilian national team in the 1962 World Cup. The extra player in the midfield allows a stronger defense and the three midfielders normally play closely together to protect the defense. A 4-3-3 formation including a defensive midfielder and two attacking midfielders was very common in Italy, Argentina and Uruguay during the 1960s and 1970s. The national team which made this formation very famous was the Dutch team of the 1974 and the 1978 World Cups, a team that impressed the entire world with their fascinating total football. In club football, the team that brought this formation to the forefront was the famous Ajax team of the early 1970s, which won three European Cups with Johan Cruyff. A variation of 4-3-3 is a 4-3-1-2 formation wherein a striker gives way to an attacking midfielder. Max Allegri used this formation at AC Milan during the 2010-11 Serie season. The formation focuses on the attacking midfielder moving play through the center with the strikers on either side. It is a much narrower setup in comparison to the 4-3-3 and it is usually dependent on the attacking midfielder to create chances. The 4-4-2 diamond formation staggers the midfield. The attacking width in this formation has to come from the fullbacks. The defensive midfielder is sometimes used as a deep line playmaker. The most famous example of a diamond 4-4-2 formation was Carlo Ancelotti's AC Milan, the team that won the 2003 UEFA Champions League and was also the runners-up in the 2005 Champions League. The 4-3-2-1 formation, which is commonly known as the Christmas tree formation, has two attacking midfielders playing behind the main striker. In this approach, the three central midfielders act as the playmaker, while one of the attacking midfielders plays in a free role. The Christmas tree formation is considered a relatively narrow formation and depends on the fullbacks to provide presence in wide areas. The formation is also relatively fluid. During open play, one of the side midfielders may drift to the flank to add additional presence. Even though Christian Gross of Tottenham was the first to use this formation, but just like the Diamond 4-4-2 formation, the 4-3-2-1 formation is also mostly associated with Carlo Ancelotti. The 5-3-2 formation has three centre-backs with one working as the sweeper. This system heavily relies on the wingbacks for providing the attacking width. It is the job of the wingbacks to work their flank along the full length of the pitch, supporting both the defence and the attack. In a 3-4-3 formation, the midfielders are expected to split their time between attacking and defending. Having only three centre-backs means that if the opposing team breaks through the midfield, 
they will have a greater chance to score the goal. But having three forwards in the team allow for a greater concentration on the offensive side. This formation is used by more offensive minded teams. The formation was famously used by Liverpool under Rafael Benitez during the second half of the 2005 Champions League final to come back from a three goal deficit. Antonio Conte also used this formation very successfully at Chelsea during his first season. Another variation of 5 3 2 and 3 4 3 is a 3 5 2 formation, which is once again mostly associated with Antonio Conte. Antonio Conte used the 3 5 2 formation very successfully at Juventus, and he is using the same formation now at Inter Milan. So that was all from today's video. There were still many more variations, but these were some of the basic formations that we use nowadays. Hopefully in the future we will talk about all these different variations and how to properly use them. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.